So today we're gonna to go and create a simple GUI. We'll set it up so that we can change the background color through a rectangle, and then we'll add a button and explore some of the functionality that we can do with the button. So when we mouse over it, when we click on it, we can do certain things. So let's jump in and start. So here I am, I'm at a playground. Uh, go ahead, set up your engine, the one you want. I'm just gonna stick with WebG, WebGL2. I am gonna use TypeScript, so we'll go ahead, we'll reset everything. And then I don't need the sphere or the ground, so I'm gonna clear it. I'm gonna start with something brand new. So a nice empty scene here. Now the first thing I have to do is actually create the, the GUI container. So something that is gonna hold all of my elements. And let me go ahead and paste the code in for that. I'll paste it right here. All right, here we go. So we're gonna create a GUI. I'm just calling the variable itself GUI. So we have to go into the Babylon GUI library. And we're gonna grab this advanced dynamic texture and we're creating a full screen UI. So that's gonna cover the whole screen for me. If we hover over this, we can see the parameters that we can provide to it. So the first one is a string, which I'm just gonna call it main menu. The second one I'm added is, uh, do we want this in the foreground? So above everything else, it's a Boolean value. So I'm just gonna say true, I do want it above it. Then the scene we wanna apply this to, right now we only have one scene, that's the default. So I'm just gonna go and throw it onto our current scene. And I'm not gonna worry about the sampling right now. But let's go ahead and run it. And what else? Nothing happened. Well, that's because we haven't actually added anything to it. So let's add a, a rectangle to the background and we'll change its color. So here we go, I've created another variable here called background, and this is just a rectangle. And again, if we hover over it, we can see the, the parameters that we're gonna pass in. In this case, we just need a string just to name it. So if we take a look, I've gone into the background and I'm setting the background color to just medium gray. And then the important thing is, is we have to go to this GUI that we made and we have to add this control to it before we can see it. If I hit run, there we go, now we can see it. And of course, uh, you can adjust the color. So let's go like really bright. Um, let's just go, Triple A, and it gets a little bit brighter. It's, it's almost white, it's approaching white. Let's add a little bit more red. There we go, so we got that hot pink. So those that don't know, these values here, it's RGB, it's hexadecimal, you can go ahead and look it up. So instead of just doing AAA, we could have did six A's. But if your set of two is the same for all of them like this, then you can do reduce it. So you could even do like ACD, so in this case, we have a little bit of white, well, a lot of, sorry, a lot of red, a little bit more green, and then even more blue. So if we go ahead and we run it, we'll get this color. And you know what? I kind of like that. I'm going to keep it. Um, actually, no, I want it darker. Three, five, seven. There we go. Darker blue. Play around with it. Add the colors you want. This is the one I'm going to go with. Okay, so we've got a background. Let's go ahead and add a button right into the center of the screen. Maybe it's a game you're making and you want like a big play button. So when you click it, it loads that level up. All right, so we've got our button, we've set it up. And again, the parameters that we can pass in is a string for the name. And then the text is actually what is shown on the button itself. So in this case, I'm making a button. I'm gonna call it BTN play. Maybe we'll do a lowercase there. And then on the button itself, it's gonna say play. So if we run this, we're like, oh, look, here's our button. It doesn't look very good. And notice when we click it, it's taking up the whole screen. If I hold down the button, we can see the border. We don't really want that. We want the want it to be like just in the middle, maybe a nice big button here in the, the center of the screen. So we can adjust the size, the height and the width. I guess I should say width, there's an H in there. All right, so we can go and adjust the height and width just by calling the variable and then adjusting its height and width properties. In this case, I've just used some magic numbers. We could um, set up a function so when the screen resizes, it would uh, switch to a certain percentage of the screen as well. But for a quick demonstration, we're just gonna look at uh, setting magic number. In this case, I'm telling it to be 0.18 on the height, and then I'm doubling that for the width. I'll go ahead and run it now. Now we get this border, it's not so big. And of course, when we click on it, nothing happens yet, because well, we haven't done it, but we can see that uh, kind of shrinks a little bit. Let's play with a few different things here. Let's go ahead and we'll change the color of the, the play button to, uh, let's do white. All right, so we can just call btn play, again, whatever variable you called it, dot color. And instead of passing in a hex value, there are some strings that you can pass into it as well. So I'm just gonna pass in white. Now, if I run it, we get white. Uh, of course, like I said, you could use hex. So the pound FFF. And if we run it, we get the same thing. And for those just learning hex, the opposite, three colors, all black. There we go. I'm gonna keep it white though. There we go. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and adjust the uh, the font size. I want the font to be a bit bigger than this, take up um, a good portion of the screen. I'm going to leave a little bit more room here so we have the 
separation between stuff for the button and stuff for the font. All right, so here we go again. We just call font size. There's a ton of different properties we can call. Um, I'm just doing font size again. We could adjust according to screen width or screen height. Uh, I'm just gonna pick a magic number at 50. We hit play and maybe a little bit bigger, maybe a 55 or something. Uh, again, if we wanted to control based on the screen size, now I do not have it set up to scale according to the window when you adjust the window. We'd have to set another little function up for that. It's not that bad, it's three lines, but not the point of this video. So let's grab window dot inner height. And we're not gonna multiply it by 50. Let's do a much smaller number. Because we want just a small percentage of the height. If we run this, apparently that was too small or too big. Uh, 0.5 is still too big. And around 0.5 seems to be pretty good. Maybe a little bit bigger. That's good. As I click it, again, nothing happens. As I hover over it, nothing happens. But we'll get that in a minute. The next thing I wanna look at is placement. Uh, there's a few different ways we can place it. We have alignments as far as vertical and horizontal. So they both work the same, depending if you wanna be on the left or the right or the top or the bottom or the center. So let's take a look at adjusting the vertical height. By default, it's set to whatever your screen height is, divided by zero, sorry, divided by two, and uh, it's set to be aligned in the center. So let's take a look at those properties. So here's one of the ways we can go ahead and position the button itself. So in this case, I've said, hey, take my vertical alignment. I want it to be centered. So it's gonna center according vertically, uh, the center point, so right about here. And I've also said, take this position, and since I wanna be like 20 pixels inside of or off the center of the screen, we can be a little more drastic here. Let's do 200 pixels. We hit it, moves it down a bit more. If we go negative, it should move it back up. There we go. Uh, we could also do things like, uh, well, if we want to be a dynamic, we can do window dot inner height, and then, I don't know, whatever the height is, and we're gonna divide it by two. And then that's what we're gonna move it. And that moved it way down there, it's too much. Uh, I think center would be about 20. Yeah, right there. So let's do 10, because maybe we want a little bit off center. There we go. And of course, if we want it to the top, just use a negative somewhere. I'll put it at the beginning. And there we go. I want it down a bit more. So what I'm gonna do is just keep it at, um, oh, maybe five. There we go, right about here, because this gives me room later on to maybe put an icon up here or maybe some other buttons. But now let's take a look at how to do the on mouse enter, on mouse exit, and also when we click it. Now in Babylon, it's called a little bit different. We don't have on mouse. What we actually have is on pointer. So I'm gonna do it after where I've added the button. Actually, let's do it before. And let's take a look at this. So again, button play, we've got a few. We should look at all of them. So we'll do on, pointer, and here's all the ones we have. We have click, which is just click. It's kind of like click up as well. I don't find much of a difference. Uh, on down is when you click the button, when you first press it down, but before you let it back up. On enter, that's your mouse over. On out is when you move it uh, the, off of it, you move your mouse off of the button itself. And up is when you let the button back up when you've clicked on the mouse. I haven't really found a difference. I'm gonna have to read in the docs a bit more about the differences between on click and on up. But for this case, I'm gonna do the on enter. That's when our mouse first moves on it. There we go. And we'll go ahead, we'll switch it to yellow. And then we'll go ahead and grow the size here as well. So when we mouse over now, we're gonna switch the button to yellow. We're gonna increase the font size by 1.5. We're also gonna adjust the height and width. I wanna go by 1.5 as well. So we don't actually need these values because we're just gonna use these ones. And let's run it. So now when I move my mouse over, it goes yellow, it gets bigger. Now when I move my mouse off, it doesn't. We have to go ahead and implement that function, which isn't that bad. We'll just take this one, copy it, put it down here, change enter, not exit, although that would make more sense. Uh, what color should we make it? Red, okay, red it is. And then we wanna go back to the default size. So right here, and I'll come in here. We don't need any of this. Oh, I guess we should put the font size back to normal. There we go. And again, we'll run it. Got our button. Now when we mouse off, it goes to, to red. Actually, we probably should go back to whatever the, the default was. So why did it? Now yellow, white, yellow, white. Only thing left to do is implement the clicking. So I'm gonna come down here and throw that in. Okay, so I've gone ahead and implemented click. So when we click on it, it's gonna turn the button blue. So let's run it. I come over, I hover over, we got it yellow. I click, nothing happens. Notice how when I first click, it's when you let the, the mouse button go, it turns blue. 
And as soon as we hover off, it goes back to white. Yellow, click, let go of the click, turns blue, back to white. If we take this click event, I'm going to switch it to down. Same thing, we run it again. Now when I click down, it, uh, it will run that function. In this case, all it does is turn the color blue. And as soon as I let it back up, nothing happens. And I come back over here, it turns to white. We could make another function here. And for this one, we'll do up. And we'll set it to white. Actually, let's do green, just so we can see the difference. And we'll run it. And again, it's white. I move in, it's turned yellow. I click, turns blue. I'm holding the mouse down. When I let go of the mouse, it turns green. When I move out of it, it returns white. So those are the four main functions that we're gonna to want to use with buttons. Now, to be fair, if you go over to Bergzerg Arcade right now, all of this background here, this orange, or is orange, the purple part is actually a canvas. Um, it's Babylon JS. But I've done my buttons and my text using just plain old CSS and HTML. That's the way I've always done it. But I kind of like the idea of being able to implement them all inside of Babylon itself. So anytime I have the script and I want to move it from, I don't know, one website to another or just different parts of a website, I don't have to worry so much about moving the HTML and CSS around. It's all built into one. Then when we click it, the loading, this is uh, Babylon JS as well. And you should be able to recognize some of these models. They're all from, uh, oh, what's that site? Um, we used to use it all the time in the old days. Oh, I'm blanking on it now. Mix them all. That's it. So I've grabbed some models. And of course, Evil Cube in the background. We've got to give them some eyes. I don't know if I want to paint them on or 3D model them. But yeah, you can go ahead and move around. Use the scroll wheel to come in and out. But anyway, this is all Babylon as well. Now, one thing to note, this frame rate up here, it's getting it through Babylon, but I'm displaying it through HTML as well. I'm, I'm mixed on this. I really don't know. I, I want to stick with the HTML because it's much easier to index. At least when your search engine comes by. Or if I want to leave it inside of uh, Babylon where it's just, it's just easy to port it around. I don't know. I might mix and match. It's going to take more experimentation. Now, the docs for all of this. If we were to come over to one of the functions here, let's do, uh, uh, let's go look at vertical, vertical alignment. A lot of them have these links that we can just grab, copy the whole thing, open a new tab, and then just paste it in. It'll bring you to the documentation. The documentation inside of Babylon is really good. Now, there's one more thing I want to show here in this video. I'm probably going to make a, a shorter video on it after, and that's how do you share these playgrounds? Let's say I'm working on something and I've got a bug, I can't figure it out, and I want to be able to share it with uh, Stack Overflow or maybe the Babylon forms, you know, somewhere. What you can do is you'll want to go and make an example, and then we're going to come up to the little save icon here. When we hit save, you can give it a title, fill in a description, put any tags you want in there. But when you hit OK, notice up here we now get this uh, little code at the end. We can copy that. I'm going to open another browser. I'm going to come into Firefox here. Let's shrink this down a bit. Now I've come into Firefox. I pasted that link in, and it pulls it up. Now I've got it enlarged a lot. Let's go ahead and we'll shrink it down. Uh, if you have it really big, I'm not sure if I've shown you this. We get this down here, which will allow you to switch between the code and the actual display. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's the exact same display that we had before. Again, I'll, I'll make that a short or something like that, just uh, so it's all by itself. But that's all we needed for the button. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.